Oh, shift. <laughs> okay, what's going on in the market? What, what could possibly be good about what's going on? I mean, let's go over a few things here. Let's hit, let's just, let's rip that Band-Aid right off, right? Okay, so home builders, uh, home builder confidence is actually down two points in June, hitting the lowest level since basically 2020. All right, not unexpected, right? Uh, housing starts also fell dramatically as builders fret over declining demand, yet there's currently basically 122,000 homes across the United States uh, that are under construction. Uh, that's the highest level since 2006. So there might be a little bit of angst with builders uh, because you have a higher cost of building material. You've got higher interest rates now, and now you've got builders that have some standing product that, well, some of them are having a little bit of an issue on getting closed. So uh, inflation, right? We have inflation that's at a 40 year high. Thank you, gotta appreciate that one, right? Uh, the slowdown in construction starts and building permits, uh, you know, interest rates shouldered the biggest hike in 28 years on Wednesday. So we had that big monster boom on the way up. Feds also had the highest, uh, since 1994, the highest uh, uh, rate increase. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that, right? Okay, plus the feds are trying to get rid of roughly about $2.71 trillion, trillion dollars, which is really one of the root causes of our interest rate issue. All right. Uh, and we're going to talk about really what is a recession because it's coming. It's a given. It's okay. They're not taking Christmas away. <laughs> They're not taking Diwali away. You know, it's one of those things that happens. So to, to be clear, some people are like, oh my gosh, it's a recession. What am I going to do? It's a recession. Oh, okay. All right. So understand. So the definition of a recession, okay, is a period of temporary economic decline in which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by following the GDP, gross domestic product, for two successive quarters. Did you know that in uh, 2020 we had a recession? Short, okay. Uh, recessions happen all the time, okay. Well, not all the time, but they happen quite often. And it's, it is and it isn't a big deal. The challenge is, is balancing in that, you know, and that's what the feds do, right? They're our central bank, right? And the feds job is to, to moderate those highs and lows between the booms and, and the recessions, right? The lows and they try and adjust rates. So like when you hear the feds raise 75 basis points, right? Which is 0.75% on the interest rate on what banks lend to each other and what the feds lend at, right? So when you look at that and they only handle home equity line of credit, okay? If you have a credit card you're, and you have a balance on your credit card, you get to pay more now, right? If you have a, a, a HELOC that adjusts monthly, it just went up, okay? That is what the feds adjust. They do not, however, control long-term mortgages. Your 30-year mortgage, your 15, your 20, your 25-year mortgage, your adjustable rate you know, mortgages, things like that. They do not adjust, they, have, they don't control that. That is publicly traded. Watch your mortgage-backed securities. Ah, we'll talk about that again. Talk about uh, your 10-year treasury or two-year treasuries, right? Watch your bonds. That is what tells you what mortgage rates do. Because on Monday, everybody was like, ah, we had this massive increase in rate. Why? Because the, the uh, reports came out on inflation and, and uh, they weren't very good. So investors had a freak out. So they pulled out, created controversy in the market. Boop, mortgage rates went up. But funny enough, on Wednesday, rates went down, even though the Fed said, we're raising rates by 0.75. And they did say they weren't going to do that in, uh, I think it was like April or March, which that just goes to tell you anything can change. I wouldn't call them a fibber, but anything can change, right? All right. So all things considered, understand the two really 
for the most part, don't have any relationship. The two being the feds and what they do and mortgage interest rates. In fact, as proven, feds raised the rate, mortgage rates actually came down, they improved. And they ticked back up a little again. But look, if you're watching the channel and you should be subscribing, we told you we were gonna hit 6% by late summer. Okay, so it was off by a month or two. But we're here, sorry, pay attention. I give you great information, there's no cost, there's no strings attached, subscribe, okay? Sure, I'm not gonna give you the sensationalism that a lot of uh, these guys do, and yeah, they get you know a lot of uh, uh, activity. Okay, fine. I would rather give you the straight scoop, not give you a bunch of sensationalistic stuff, because the goal is for you to make a good business decision, and that's what this channel is about, making good, business decisions. So we're going to, we're going to put perspective into things. Now we just talked about all the bad stuff, right? And many of you are like, Hey George, um, you didn't have a show last week. And I'll say, you know, actually I did. My show was in a different location because I had the honor. It truly it's an honor to speak at the, uh, Northwest credit union collectors association. I have to get that right. Uh, and, I just a shout out to each and every one of them. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and to present to you guys. Uh, you guys are just awesome. Anybody who does not understand, if you really want customer service, if you really want a bank uh, that that really works for you, and because we work with a lot of banks, you know, with uh, foreclosures and short sales and defaults and things like that, you know, uh, credit unions are not immune to that. But I'll tell you something. Talk about somebody who actually cares, who works with you guys. If you are with a credit union and you have some financial issues, wow, you got great, great people that want to actually help you. Okay. Now, granted, you got to help yourself too, right? But they, they are, they are awesome. And so they are, that's why I really enjoy working more with credit unions than the big industrial banks because they care about the members and uh, like us, they actually care. So a shout out to all of them. Thank you. You, uh, that's on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to watch it. I'll have uh, Vikas and uh, Sifat go ahead and post uh, that link there. Maybe you may able to do it. But anyway, one of my team members is going to put that link there for you guys. All right. So with that being said, let's move on. When we talk about perspective, we talk about what's going in the market and versus what you're going to see out in the media, right? When you look at this number, you're like, Holy macro, George, you just doubled the inventory. And my response is, finally, finally, we're getting some inventory back. Why? Because I'll tell you something, you know, <laughs> there's still a massive pent up demand. Okay, 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 yes. All right, so you missed the 50% off interest, mortgage interest sale. Okay, you missed it. But that doesn't mean that the product's still not good. That doesn't mean you go home and cry in, in your pillow it just means, hey, all right, the timing wasn't right. But still, anything between five and three quarters, six and a half, seven percent are still great mortgage rates. Sure, three percent's better. I'm not a math genius, <laughs> but guess what? We're not going there again, all right? Just understand that the likelihood of that happening again is pretty slim, at least anytime in the near future, right? Because, all right, so some people are saying, George, how did we get down there? Look guys, I just gave you uh, a hint just a little bit ago. The feds are selling off mortgage-backed securities. Guess when they started selling off mortgage-backed securities? Go back and watch the channel. And this is what's super important. And again, why this is so valuable. Back in February and March, we said the feds in April, May are gonna start selling off mortgage-backed securities. And you might say, George, what the heck is a mortgage-backed security? All right simplified version of a mortgage-backed security. You and thousands of your best friends get a mortgage, right? And all of the banks and credit unions pack those in. They resell all of those securities, all of those mortgages to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. And they bundle them into billion dollars and multi-billion dollar packages called a mortgage-backed security, and they sell them out on the open market, okay? For the companies that need to earn one and a half, two percent because it's ultra conservative, retirement accounts, insurance companies, things like this, 
to protect an asset. What better way to protect an asset than to, to gamble on or invest in people uh, who want to stay in their home, right? Because people like to stay in their house, which is awesome, right? So it's a very secure investment. All right. But the problem is the feds were buying them. Instead of selling them out on the open market, feds are saying, give it to me. Gobble, gobble, gobble. I'm going to eat them up. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Uh, and they have been doing this since, oh my gosh, since 2018. Well, they're up, they, they're, they're north of 2.71 trillion with a T dollars. And for those of you that are unaware, that is a buttload of money. All right. Now, what did they do? They started selling them off. So they went from scarcity, right? Where there was next to no inventory out there. And then they're, they're throwing 30, 50 billion dollars at a crack back into the, the industry and all of those other uh, companies and organizations that need, you know, REITs, hedge funds, uh, uh, insurance companies, uh, uh, you know, for, you know, retirement, uh, you know, companies, things like this that manage and need safe, secure. They can only take in so much, right? It's that sponge. So the inverts, it's that sponge. It was super dry, super dry. They gobbled it up for a little short period of time because they have them. They're not the federal government who thinks that they have unlimited spending and they've flooded that market. Well, that dropped the value of the mortgage backed securities. When that value drops, interest rates go up. And that, if you look back at April and May, is exactly what happened. Not unexpected. Now, does that mean that our economy is circling with the tidy bowl, man? No, it's just the way it is. And we're getting back to normal. What is this? Finally, 104%. That puts us at 10,000 listings today. Technically, we should be in 2017, which we'll compare some numbers to. In 2017, which was a very aggressive, you know, crazy market, there were 13,000 listings at this time. So we're still even below that. On average, 18 to 22,000 listings. Uh, definitely watch my presentation and the video with the Northwest Credit Union Collectors Association, which uh, is Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, and Idaho that was there. You can't see all of the people there. They were mostly behind us because we're videoing up front. But I'll tell you something. Watch the video. It is the information and the message. You're going to see some commonality here. But at that point, I'm and for anybody who's investing, hey, I'm going to buy a foreclosure. Uh, you need to watch that because no, you're not. <laughs> we don't have really any foreclosures. And we go into the whys and the lack of default. Well, I shouldn't say the benefit that our, our default rates are so low. Okay. So, we talk about inventory, just this number alone. And I say, finally, over here, month, you know, month, the same month year over year, I go, woohoo. Why? I actually, it's woohoo. Okay. Why? Because if you want a healthy market, hey, listen, if you're interested in saving the value of your investment, you need to rip that band aid off of, and, and just suck it up for a little bit and just acclimate to what we've got. Why? Because that is what stabilizes your investment. That's why. Let's look at this. Now, I know Vikas on my YouTube channel is going to embed some uh, stuff, but here on Facebook, we're going to do it this way. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. This is normal inventory. Light green are homes available right here. The blue line that you see here, this is new on market trend. The red line is a pending trend. Look at here. Since 2020, since you guys were supposed to be at home with COVID or preventing COVID in 2020, we massively dropped our inventory. It's not that the people took their homes off the market. That's not the case at all. They just sold. We have record sales where we flipped, right? The number of homes available versus the homes sold. And we have been doing that since basically April of 2020. Now, when we take a look at it and we talk about months of inventory, okay? Now, months of inventory, and I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. That was one thing I was asked by a number of the subscribers. Hey, can you make this a little bit easier? Okay. Understand months of inventory, which is an absorption rate. In absorption, think of it as a sponge. A sponge absorbs water, right? So if we have a super crinkly dry sponge and I put some water on it, whoop, it's going to suck it up really fast. Okay. That's that is where we have been and kind of still are, right? We've been whoop, sucking up the water, right? But 
Here's the difference. Once you get that sponge full and you start to see a little bit of water pooling around the edge, okay, that means we're at that maximum level. We're at that kind of the evaporation, take in water, evaporation, take in water stage, okay? That's called a balanced market, all right? And that is four to six months. In other words, if I have a bucket, and we call this bucket the Northwest MLS, all right? The Northwest Multiple Listing Service. And all the agents put their listings in this bucket, and I put a lid on it. We should have four to six months of inventory to be a balanced market still to sell. Without anything else to it, have four to six months, okay? The problem is that our sponge has been really dry, or that bucket has been really low. And we've been pulling down the bucket, the level in that bucket more and more, kind of like Lake Mead, right? <laughs> right? Keeps going down. People are like, oh my God, that's amazing. It keeps going down. Well, we're now getting a little bit of rain that goes into Lake Mead. We're starting to fill that back up a little bit. We're not out of the danger zone. And now we're going to bring in a little bit more perspective. Okay. So here we go. This is 2020 average. We had one and a half months of, of inventory. One and a half months, 1.4, 1.7, 1.6, boom. We hit June, one month. And all of a sudden now we're below one month. We were down to two weeks. We were down to three weeks, right? And you can see now we're starting to bump back up a little bit. Not uncommon during April, May, and June to see higher months of inventory. Always, always, always. Look right here. These peaks are the summer peaks. That is normal. It is our normal spring summer market. Please don't panic. Sure, buyers are now not only super smart, but super sensitive at the same time, right? It's like going out and getting a really bad sunburn. <laughs> You're super sensitive. All right, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Heck, we put five homes on the contract just this week alone with buyers, okay? Uh, we had one uh, home that, uh, that listed in Sammamish that had uh, multiple offers. And people said, well, there's no more than multiple offers. Horse pucky, price, condition of the home, right? And location, actually it's the other way. It's price and the location and condition of the home. And those three things will dictate what a home will sell for and how quickly it will sell for. And price being the biggest one, okay? Now, does that mean that every seller on the market is overpriced? No. Are some of them? Yes. Do some of them need to do an adjustment? Yes. Should I panic if my home has been on the market for 20 to 30 days and it hasn't sold? No. Why? Because you entered into the seasonal snow, uh, snow. <laughs> seasonal slow, what we call the vacation trifecta. Okay. You have Memorial Day. Then you have summer and kids get out of school, which I call the mental break, the mental vacation, right? Then we have 4th of July. Okay. Then after that, we have Labor Day for heaven's sakes. Okay. And we stack them super tight. And during the summer, people want to get the heck out of Dodge. Real estate is not top of mind. Normal. And that is exactly what we're seeing. We're going to see a significant bump in activity post July 4th weekend. Just heads up, it always happens. Why? Because people want to get situated for uh, the rest of the year. They're between, <laughs> between the vacation trifecta. And they want to be, uh, for families, want to have their kids in the right school district. Okay. Totally cool. Normal. Seasonally normal. All right. Now, if we take a look at this, we had 1,893 homes coming on market. Pendant was 1,531. Okay. That's right on par. I'd like to see this closer to 2,000. We probably would, except buyers out there feel that they missed a 50% off sale on mortgage interest rates. Okay. Sorry. But that doesn't mean that there are not quality investments and they are still buying. Okay. Sold 1,458. Yeah, I'd like to see that about 200, uh, 200 homes higher. But again, still right on par. If our market was circling with the tidy bull, man, we wouldn't be seeing these numbers at all. In fact, I can show you if you look back on the foreclosure. In fact, watch the foreclosure or the uh, credit union conference video. You're going to see the foreclosure chart and how it translates. Super cool information uh, and gives you better perspective on this market. All right. 1,270, what the heck is that? <clears throat> this is the number of uh, price drops over the last seven days. Uh, totally expected. Why? Some homes are just flat out overpriced. Others are trying to 
navigate and strategically, tactically uh, get in front of buyers. Now this becomes more important when I say putting your home in the MLS is not marketing. For all sellers out there, bonk, 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 putting your home in the MLS is not marketing. If your agent is only doing putting it in the MLS and is not strategically marketing, showing you, hey, this is how we're marketing, this, I'm proving to you how I'm bringing eyeballs onto your property, then there's a problem, okay? And yes, believe it or not, that costs, that's called spending marketing dollars, paying to attract buyers to get conversations started. That is super important. All right, when we talk about new that came on market, it's only 4.7 year over year, not uncommon. Pended are down 8.8, .8, solds are down 6.8. Okay, it's a couple of thousand properties. Considering that we're at, I think, 90, no, 38,000, is that right? Uh, 36,000 and 39,000. So we're at 36,000 homes. Last year we were at 39,000 homes. Okay, that's about right. Totally normal. Uh, we've had some pullback from buyers, totally normal. So the question is, is our market really tanking? Are we having a massive issue? No, we're not. Now, of the areas that are gonna have an issue, it will be the areas that are where second homes are popular. Uh, we are in Arizona and Florida and Detroit and parts of uh, Ohio, uh, Texas. Those are the areas that are going to probably see and get some of the bigger hits. Possibly. Now, you did have a huge influx into those areas of real money, right? Not just people that went down to buy an investment home, but real money uh, that people physically relocated there. And that's a big difference. And so you're going to see, in my humble opinion, some skewed reports because the income levels versus who's there versus the home level uh, is not going to reflect for at least another year. And so you're going to hear some doomers and gloomers out there. I've already heard them and I smile. And you know what? The market is what the market is. However, when we deal here with our bubble of, you know, the, the Puget Sound area, okay, uh, and I don't mean the bubble that boop, we're going to pop because there's really not much to pop. We are going to, again, stay safe. Now, in prior episodes, you heard me talk about the fact that 2023 is going to be a recessive market. We're not going to see the double digit appreciation. I said we would see roughly a little bit between 10 and 12 percent this year. Next year, we're probably going to see about four to five percent. OK, that doesn't mean we're going down. We're just not going up as five. So we're, we're at that, if you're on that treadmill, we're at the one to 2%, <laughs> not the 18% where we're going up like this, right? Okay, so I guess if you use the same analogy, we're on the 4% grade, which is still tough, but I just want you to say, hey, we're, we're at a mild incline, not a steep incline, all right? And just understand, yes, you may have missed the 50% price reduction on interest rates, sorry, however, the market is still moving. The values are still here. And our continued uh, value appreciation will be there. Will interest rates hit 7% this year? That was a question that I asked in January. And I said, uh, I think, you know, I hedged towards the yes. Wasn't 100% sure, but knew we were definitely going to hit the sixes and into the mid sixes. I still believe that. That's where we're at right now. Spot on perfect. Will we hit seven? Possibly. It just depends. You know, the feds keep, uh, you know, trying to slow down the inflation by increasing costs, which it, it reduces people out there, their vigor to go out and buy things. When that reduces, when that slows down, that stops the inflationary process with limited inventory and crazy prices, right? Okay. When we take a look at that, when we start to pull that back, interest rates will moderate with it because again, remember it's traded on the stock market. So as that tends to bounce around, Sure, I think we're gonna hit sevens a couple of times and then come back down to the sixes. I think we'll probably mellow out in the mid sixes, somewhere in there, which is a totally normal interest rate, all right? Okay, based on the rest of this, hey guys, our numbers actually are doing really well. Honestly, they're doing very well. Buyers out there have more options to choose from without the caustic craziness. Look, we needed balance. If you want to, look again, if you wanna maintain it, your investment value, you have to have this balance. You've got to rip the Band-Aid off. You've got to have this balance. If you don't have the balance, it's going to be a crazy dive down the road. Now it's a, a, a little bit of a pain 
adjustment. Can't say it's a recovery. It's an adjustment. And then, believe it or not, sellers are going to say that have been sitting on the sidelines are going to say, you know what? Hey, I think I am willing to uh, put my house on the market because I have options to choose from. Okay. And that's a big deal. And that again, brings us back. People are, you know, got kind of caught up in the sensationalistic, you know, give away everything, including the farm to buy the next house. And now we're getting back down to a set of normalcy uh, to where good financial decisions for you and your family come into play. And that is huge. And that is why finally in woohoo, because now people can make better decisions. They have more options. Okay. And they don't have to, you know, worry about sacrificing everything uh, just to get a, what they think might be the right home. Our clients always get the right home. We have, a, we have skin in the game <laughs> with them and they all know it. Listen, the market's doing good. Uh, despite what you might be hearing, our numbers are still doing well. Uh, no different than what we've been talking about the, the last year and for what to expect. What should you expect for next year? Look, it's going to be a little bit flatter. 2024 is going to be, I think, a recovery year for the real estate. And I think we're going to start ramping up uh, and we'll see what interest rates do based on what goes on uh, internationally and how much more the FUDs end up selling off on mortgage-backed securities. So with that, subscribe, okay? It's free. Uh, by subscribing helps others see this really good information to help you guys make a good business decision. That's really the end of the goal. If you have any questions, let me know. In the meantime, you guys have a beautiful day. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.